cool. And let me hide the, okay. I think I'll just place it here. Cool. So hello everyone and welcome to the CSS1 lecture. And this is going to be a very exciting lecture as um, essentially on Monday, you have learned how to build the skeleton of a website uh, with Sarushi. Essentially, um, I believe she have she has covered um, she have tags and how you like actually uh, make some, uh, for example, headings, uh, you know, website. And those are really good stuff. However, we don't have the styling for the website yet. We don't have the thing that makes a website pretty. And in this lecture, we will be covering our introduction to CSS. And so first of all, what is CSS? CSS is essentially a way uh, for you to style the website. Uh, for instance, here, you, as you can see, here are just some HTML and there are, are no CSS affiliated to this HTML. And those HTML elements are just in its like original form without any style and it's pretty boring. As you can see here in the Notion doc, uh, here is also a site with no CSS styling. As you can see, it's pretty boring site. Uh, all the tags are just like black and some of these are probably picture. Uh, that's why they, they have color. And the website layout is also very weird. It's just not that good looking. However, if we apply the site with some CSS styling, we will get this. As you can see the grow and innovate, instead of like being uh, this big, it becomes smaller and it becomes like center in the page and all the texts are centered nice and nicely. And you can see the button ha has a cool kind of like hover effect. So this is uh, like, this is a quick peek into what we are going to learning essentially in this lecture and also the CSS2 lecture. <clears throat> so let's get into how do we actually implement CSS. So you have already learned how to write HTML code. Then how do we, before we actually write any CSS code out, how do we actually incorporate CSS into HTML code? So there are essentially three ways. And the first way is to use a style attribute. And essentially inside any HTML tag, anything that's inside, for instance, class here, or the style here are called attributes. And attributes can be added to the tag to modify the tag in some way. For instance, here, uh, the tag, uh, the, the style attribute that's being added to the headline <coughs> is color blue and also text align center. Uh, let's try to add this to our code as well. And uh, here, as you can see, there's some HTML code that I've just written and it's uh, being rendered down below here. And let's try change the introduction to CSS ha ha uh, headline, which is the H1 tag here. So let's try to use a style attribute. And let's give it a color, for instance, blue. And if we cl click save, as you can see, introduction to CSS suddenly becomes blue. And this is the use, uh, this is essentially the functionality of CSS. It gives styles to all the HTML tag that we have here. And here, there's also a text align center. And uh, let's try that as well. So text align center, let's click save. And as you can see, introduction to CSS now uh, jumps to the center. And this is uh, just like uh, a very like small amount of things that CSS can do. There are also like a lot of fancy things that CSS can do and we will introduce them one by one. And so this using style attribute is the first way that you can incorporate CSS into HTML file. Also, you can use a style tag and the style tag lo locates in the meta portion uh, of the HTML document. So let's try that. Uh, you may find that, you may see that there's no like hat um, tag here. This is because we are using Copen and Copen is pretty like linear on how you write uh, HTML code. And let's, let's, add a, let's add a hat tag here. And also let's add stack, style tag. 
And everything that goes into the style tag will be our HTML, will be our CSS code. And this CSS code will influence the stylings down below. For instance, we have just changed the uh, styling of this H1 tag. And let's try to do the same in the same thing in the style tag uh, up uh, here in the head tag. So let's try H1 color blue. As you can see here, if you add it this way, the H1 tag introduction to CSS will also be changed to blue. And this is essentially the second way that you can add CSS is by using the style tag. Uh, as you may see, uh, instead of directly write color blue here, uh, since we're writing color blue in the style uh, kind of like separate um, places, we kind of need to make the CSS, uh, kind of need to make the CSS like this color blue points to the introduction to CSS, like this H1 tag. And to do this, we use something called this selector. And H1 is a selector. Essentially, if you say H1 here, it will select this H1 introduction to CSS tag and then make it blue. You can also change it to, for instance, uh h3 so as you can see here h3 there's alex Wu here which is my name and let's change it to h3 and click save as you can see alex Wu now becomes blue so this is the second way of using style tag however once we have written like uh usually like uh usually CSS file was much longer than a simple like H3 uh, with color blue. And when the CSS file gets larger and larger, it becomes kind of weird to place CSS file uh, within an HTML file. As a result, we might, we might want to link CSS file to this HTML file. And that's what we can do. Uh, something to notice that is in the uh, code pen here, CSS is automatically linked to this HTML. However, if you are writing code like somewhere else, you need to do this. You need to put this in your HTML um, file. And then this, um, this reference link is the uh, relative link, relative class to your CSS file. So for instance, here, in the example here, the CSS file this about.css is placed in the style folder, which is located like above the HTML file. And we find the CSS file this way and link it using the link uh, tag. And this is essentially the third way that you can link a CSS file to a HTML file. And this is the way that we will use like um, most frequently. Well, so these are the three ways of linking CSS to HTML. Uh, are there any questions so far? Let me check the chat. Okay. Cool. So let's now move on to the uh, next topic of our lecture, which is how to style specific elements. We have already shown how to uh, style, for instance, uh, H3 tag or H1 tag. Uh, we can also style, for instance, the P tag by just using P or red. And we, if, we click slay, uh, if we click save, uh, as you can see, the junior studying computer science, essentially the seeing the P tag will be selected to color red. And however, if there are like multiple P tag uh, on, a, uh, on a HTML document, how are we going to distinguish between two P tag? For instance, here, if we want to add a, another P tag and this P tag is for instance, the, um, so this is a description. This is, let's just say, um, my age, and I'm 21 right now. And if we uh, click save, we can find that 
uh, both of the paragraph are all red. However, if we only want the junior studying computer science red, how are we going to do this? And we can use something called the text, we can use something called the class selectors. And so this P color red, the P is called a tag selector, which means that you only select the text. And when, when you use the tag selector, you select all the text that appears in a HTML document. If we want finer like granularity, we use the class selector. As you can see uh, here, this P tag has a class of card disk, card description. And this P tag here has a class of class H. And to select, for instance, the age, or yeah, let's say we want to select the age class. We can do dot age. And then let's say we want there to be uh, violate, violate. As you can see here, the color is successfully updated from red to violet. And this is done by using this class selector and class selector is essentially signified by this dot. For instance, if we want to select another uh, class, say we want to select the card, uh, card title class, then we can simply do card title. And this time we want to give it a background color. So we do background color and let's make it blue. And as you can see, uh, Alex Wu now has a black one color of blue. Uh, as you might see, we it's kind of hard to like see the actual like actual uh, scene written right here. So let's make it white to make it has a nice contrast with the background. So cool. And this is the class selector. We also have something called the ID selector. And so say we have another um, P tag. And this P tag is also a class uh, of class card description. And maybe it says something like, uh, uh, I like drink, I like to drink, I like orange juice. As you can see here, um, both I like orange juice and junior studying computer science are red. And we kind of want to select only this um, like element without selecting this class. And what we can do is add an ID. And for instance, this ID, let's give it like call OJ. And to select an ID, to use the ID selector, we use the hash um, symbol. And then we follow it by OJ. And then let's say we want to make the background color black. And we want to make the color white. And as you can see here, I like orange juice now has a background color of black and color of a text color of white. So these are the three selectors, the class selector using dot, the text, uh, the ID selector using the, um, like the hashtag sign and also the normal uh, text selector. Any questions so far? Okay, uh, do these work with color codes too, like hex codes? Um, this is a question raised by Dennis in the chat. And the answer is yes, if you're asking like uh, background color and color. So for instance, if we are, uh, if we want the background color to be, um, let's say EE, a kind of like a nice grayish color. As you can see here, it's changed um, to like a grayish color. And let's say we want it to be uh, 404, which is um, kind of like a more subtle black color. As you can see here, it's also changed. And I would say actually using the hex though, uh, using like hex format uh, or like using RGB, or using RGB is another way to like simplify color. It's definitely more common than simply using the name. So yeah. 
And RGB, you can do it this way as well. So let's say 20, 20, 20. That's probably the same. Let's make it 100. Uh, wait, why it's not changing? That's pretty weird. Maybe double check. This is RGB. Yeah, it should be correct. Don't really know. Let's try to change it to 200. Okay, now it's changed. It's probably like the color is like uh, pretty subtle. So we can't really see the change. Yeah, essentially there are three ways to uh, change a color. You can use RGB, you can use the hex code, you can also use the name. Yeah. Any other questions? And now there, so besides these kind, these three kinds of selector, there are also a bunch of other sorts of selector. Um, so say if we want everything in the website to have like a padding. Uh, so what's padding? Padding is essentially the distance around any element. Now how, if we want to like do this for every element, uh, it'll be pretty hard to like say H3 padding, P padding, and then like diff padding is pretty annoying. So CSS offers us a universal selector, uh, with, which is the star sign. And we can do like padding, 20 pixel, as you can see. Now everything here is separated by 20 pixel. Pixel is just a way to like calculate distance um, within a website, and yeah. So this is a universal selector. There's also something called the grouping selector. And grouping selector is very useful if you want to um, say, if, the, um, if some different elements, different sorts of elements have some same uh, similar stylings and you can style all the elements uh, at once using a grouping selector. So for instance, let's say the dot age uh, actually, let's change the padding down a little bit. Okay. Uh, let's say the dot age and dot car title class all share some similar attribute. Then we can do dot age, comma, dot car title. And then let's say, uh, let's say it all has like a border of one pixel. Is it one pixel black? It's probably one pixel black. Uh, let me double check the border. CSS, let's see. So border, border style. Uh, Okay, let's just try to use the border style dotting. Let's do this. As you can see here, uh, by using the grouping selector comma, uh, we can select both the dot age and the dot car title and add a dotted border around both classes. So this is a grouping selector. And there's also another sort of grouping selector. For instance, if there, are, uh, if this car description is outside of card um, card diff, if we want, we only want to select the car description inside the car diff. And what we can do, let's delete all the styling here. And what we can do is to use dot card, and then dot card this. If we do color blue. This way you can only you only you can only um, style 
the junior studying computer science. And this lecture is essentially saying that, first of all, you find the dot card class, which is here. And then you find the dot card disk class, which is here. And it will only select the um, things here. Uh, as you can see here, the card is, this card description is outside of the card um, div here. Uh, as a result, I like orange juice. It's not changed to blue. And cool. Now, any questions for the grouping selectors? Let's see. Uh, so there's a question in chat. It's uh, in HTML, can any type of element have a class or can it be entire divisions or single elements? Um, so essentially, yeah, and any type of element or like any type of tag can have a class. And uh, can it be entire divisions and single elements? Um, class and I, so both class and IDs technically can share between um, different elements or different tags. However, usually we recommend only using class um, that uh, we, if, if you want to like um, group multiple um, tag together, for instance, like the two car description, we only recommend using class to do it. So for instance, these two um, tag both have the car description class and then um, this is a correct way to do it. If you want to do it like using ID, we don't really recommend it because like, like usually ID is, uh, ID is used to style single uh, HTML element. So yeah, this is kind of like a, um, kind of like a difference between ID and class. I hope that answers your question. Any other questions? Cool. And now, so these are all the selectors. And so, there's something in chat. Uh, so there's another question. So if we want to style most H1 elements, but not all use class or apply the style to all H1, then make an exception with ID. Okay, so this is a very good question. Essentially, this is, uh, I would say kind of like a design decision uh, on your end. And um, both ways that you mentioned in chat are completely valid way to do it. Um, personally, if I'm going to um, style most H1 elements, but not all, it really depends on like how much not all are there. And um, if there are only like one or two, I'll probably use an exception using ID. Uh, if there are like quite a lot, then I will try to like, uh, for instance, find patterns within those like exceptions and then use class maybe. So yeah. So essentially CSS is pretty flexible. You can write it any way you want as long as it uh, makes sense. You know, as long as the thing on the website uh, is being updated to your need. Cool. And now, uh, since we've covered, since we already covered uh, selectors and also the kind of like introduction to CSS, let's see how do we, uh, wait. Let's see some common CSS properties. And so these are a set list of um, common CSS properties that's being used. And let's try them out. So we have already covered color and there's also a font size. Uh, so for instance, let's just try, yeah, let's just try styling this junior selling computer science. So font size is in charge of changing the size of the font. So for instance, if we make it 20 pixel, it becomes larger as you can see. If we make it like 90 pixel, it becomes super large. Uh, yeah. Uh, let's make it 10 pixel probably. 10 pixels probably too small. 
17 pixel. Cool. 17 pixels, nice. Let's look at the next CSS property. So font weight. So font weight. Font weight is kind of like the um, it's essentially just its literal meaning, like the weight of the font. So if we have the font weight at 700, uh, we can see that all the fonts, the all the text here are kind of like bold. And if we make it 100, uh, as you can see, it becomes like regular. Uh, let's see what will happen if we make it zero. As you can see, it won't really change. So 100 is kind of like the minimum of the font weight. And uh, let's try 400. The change is probably like too subtle to see it, but usually, uh, so uh, font weight also depends on the um, type of font that you use. So some fonts will support uh, font weight of 400, 300, 200. Some fonts, uh, for instance, a default font will usually only support like two kinds of font weight. One is a bold one and another is a regular one. So this is font weight. And there's also something called font family. So font family, uh, font family is essentially the um, font type uh, that this font has. So let's try and get some font family because I don't know any font family at the top from the top of my head. Let's see. So let's try the good old Times New Roman. Let's play here. As you can see, the change is pretty, pretty subtle. But um, as you can see, without adding font family like this, and if we add font family, it changes the Times New Roman. And so, as you can see here, there are actually three types of font written here. And the first font is kind of like the font that you want the user to see. And then why we need the second font? So the second font is essentially saying that if the user don't have the first font, so for instance, if some for some reason their browser don't have Times New Roman, then it will look for the second font. And if the uh, browser don't have the second font, it will look for the third font. And this is how the font family work. Let's delete that. And there's also text decoration. Uh, for instance, there's underline. As you can see, there's a underline here. Uh, you can probably change it to some other types. Let's see what other types are there. Text decorations. Yeah, so you can see there are like quite a, quite a lot of different text decorations. You can change it to be like underline dotted. You can also uh, change the color of the underline. You can also change the, uh, like the type of the underline. You can actually make it gravy. <laughs> you can actually make it wavy. This is pretty interesting. And you can also like make it overlay. So these are just like some of the fun um, text decorations that you can try out. And the next one is really important. So text align. I would say this is the most used um, CSS properties among all, all of them. So let's say center. And if you do text align center, the text will align uh, in the center of the page. And so this kind of covers all the text properties. And let's look at some border properties. We have already demonstrated some, for instance, for instance, the uh, border style, I believe. Let's see. CSS border. Uh, this is for the property, cool. And so this is how a border property is usually structured. And the broader, pro broader can take in three parameters. The first parameter is the distance or the width of the border. And the second parameter is the type of the border. And the third parameter is the color of the border. And let's try this out in, the, uh, in our code pen. So for instance, let's let's try and uh, give the H1 a border since it's a headline. So border, and remember the first is the uh, width, 
second is a type and third is a color. Let's actually just copy and paste to it. As you can see here, it changes to a reddish water. And if you make it like 20, you will see a super like super wide border. You can also change the type here. You can change it to dotted and become dotted. Then change color, make it green. So yeah, this is the border. And there's also something, actually let's make it change back to solid. There's also something very cool called border radius. So border radius, let's make it, uh, for instance, two pixel. Two pixels probably too subtle for us to see. Let's make it four pixel. Um, probably make this a little bit smaller. Uh, as you can see here, it's actually like a little bit more like circle-ish. We can make it larger. For instance, 10 pixel, as you can see, it's be it becomes more like curvy. And if we make it like 20 pixel, as you can see, it almost become like a circle. You can also use percentage here. So for instance, 50% will give you this. 20%. I'll give you this. And these are all like different border radius that you can try out. And usually we would just use, for instance, a border radius of like 10 pixel and just make things, you know, um, pretty subtle. Cool. So now we have covered um, both the border and the text properties. Are there any questions so far? Okay. Cool. Now let's move on to the um, position and sizing. And this is kind of like a, uh, I would say a trickier section. And it's those things that in CSS, it's pretty uh, tricky to get when you first learn it. However, like after you try it out by your own, and then play around with it several times, you will get a hang on it. And so, um, so first of all, let's introduce a default source of position. So for every element, so for every tag in an HTML document, the position, so for every uh, element, the position is actually default to static, or uh, to default to, um, wait, let me double check. Sorry about that. CSS this position default. Yeah, so it's default to static. Yeah. Uh, so what, what essentially does static mean is that the elements, all the elements will appear one by one by one. Oops. Um, so these, so for instance, the H1 tag is here. And then the H3 tag, as you can see, is right down below. And the P tag is then down below. And then another P tag is like down below and so on. And this is kind of like the normal flow of the HTML um, uh, tag. So, so the default is called static. However, we can change some of the elements um, position. So for instance, there's a position called relative. A relative is something that's built upon of static. So for instance, we want to change the relative position of Alex Wu. Let's do this. So let's first of all select it. So car title. If we change the position to relative, if we save it, as you can see, there's nothing changed here because we actually need to uh, specify the, uh, there's a left and there's also a top attribute. There's also like a right property and also a, I believe it's a bottom property. Let's use a left property for now. 
as you can see, after we add the lab 20 pixel, Alex who has been um, displaced from its original position to its right 20 pixel. And left 20 pixel is essentially saying that we will add 20 pixel of uh, blank stuff to the left of Alex Wu. Let's make it a little bit um, obvious. As you can see, 100 pixel, uh, uh, Alex Wu here will have 100 pixel. And if we delete it, it goes back to its original position. So this is relative. Relative, uh, what relative does is essentially it deviate the tag from its original position to the um, to the position that you want. You can also do, for instance, left uh, top 200 pixel, and boom, now it becomes here. It starts right from here, and it goes from here. And top 20 pixels adding essentially 20, 200 pixels of like white space or empty space here. And as you can see, one very important thing is that um, if you use position relative here, you will actually not distort uh, all the elements here. So essentially by changing this Alex Wu uh, tag, it will only influence itself and it will not influence any of the tag below it. So this is a position relative. And now let's talk about position absolute. So position relative, uh, so position absolute is pretty similar to position relative. Let's, see. let's change it to position absolute. As you can see, something just happened, but it happens pretty quick. We didn't really see clearly. Let's do it again. So this is relative. As you can see, relative here, there's a blank stop, blank spot uh, reserved for Alex Wu. And if, for instance, if we like delete out the code here, as you can see, like Alex will go back to his original position. And if we add the position relative back, the like the original um, spot that the Alex will occupy does not go away. However, if we change it to absolute, as you can see, that spot go away. And so what this means is that um, relative will only change like the appearance of a tag. And the actual position that the tag scene is actually uh, still there. And if you change it, change the position to absolute, it will actually take away that um, space preserved for Alex Wu. And all the other elements, all the other tags that's down below will move up. Essentially, this H3 tag will be kind of like moved away from the normal flow of HTML. So this is the difference between absolute and relative. And also you might see that, um, so absolute is right above here. And if we change to relative, it's actually, um, if you can feel it, it's actually like a little bit down from the absolute. So let's change it back to absolute. Yes, yeah, so you can see Alex who jump from here to here. And this is essentially saying that Alex so this is what uh, absolute does is essentially uh, the position now, um, if we use relative, the left 100 pixel and top 200 pixel is calculated from its original position. However, if we use absolute, the left 100 pixel and top 200 pixel is calculated from the, um, from the uh, zero's position of its parent tag. So Alex Wu's parent tag is card and card is right like right above here about here like this kind of like square-ish area is where the card lives and the alex will like the displacement is counted from here uh like the start of the um, card uh element and then you displace it to here if we change it to zero pixel and zero pixel you can see it pretty clearly Essentially the car starts from here and then it goes up. So yeah, so it's for instance, if you change it to 100 pixel, it goes up there. So that's position absolute. Uh, before we move on to sticky and fix, 
are there any questions for relative absolute? And if we move on to another topic, feel free to, uh, you know, raise your question in the chat as well. We'll come back to it once we, you know, finish it. So we've covered uh, relative, absolute, and now let's talk about fixed. So let's change it to fixed. Uh, fixed may be a little bit, uh, let's just, yeah, fix may be a little bit hard to demonstrate because it actually needs to scroll the website a little bit. Let's just look up some example. So CSS fix. Why there's no fix? So CSS fix example. Uh, let's see. So for instance here, this element, uh, I hope you can see it, but it's right here. Uh, essentially the fix, if you use a fix, it will be positioned relative to the viewport. I remember that um, when we were just talking about absolute and the, uh, and the difference between an absolute um, positioning and a fixed position, is that the absolute position, it, the element will be positioned relative to its parent element. So for instance, here, um, the, uh, the card title element is positioned relative to the card um, tag. However, if we change it to fix, and then probably make uh, left zero pixel and bottom zero pixel, as you can see, car title here now, it's actually positioned relative to the viewport. If we change it to absolute. Oh, cause the car title is pretty long. Cause the car is pretty long. So it's actually stays the same. It will be better to look at this example, I guess. Essentially the fix will be positioned relative to the viewport. And it will actually change when the viewports change. So this is fixed. Now let's look at sticky. Sticky. And sticky is a very interesting. Um, uh, sticky is a very interesting um, position type. As you can see, it behaves usually like just say a relative um, element. However, when you are scroll like past this, as you can see the sticky actually stick to the top. So sticky is a pretty special element. It kind of have two phases to it. The first phase is when it's like normal. And for instance, we can make like 200 pixel, 29 pixel, run. As you can see, even if we change the top, it doesn't really like change. However, if we scroll down uh, if we change the top to 29 pixel, it will become sticky. 29 pixel uh, before the um, the top of your viewport. So this is sticky. Uh, any questions for sticky and fix? Cool. Okay, now let's talk about sizing. So sizing is another um, pretty tricky thing to do in CSS. So for instance, let's change the car title font size. We have already talked about pixel and pixel is just one way you can use to measure 
kind of like the size of anything on a website. You can also use uh, what's called EM. 20 EM may be too large, let's make it 2 EM. And essentially what EM does is times two times the number before to your default um, browser size. And usually the default browser size, so the default browser size is around 16, uh, around 16 pixels. And 2 EM will essentially be, be pretty similar to 32 pixel. As you can see, if we change to 32 pixel, it looks like this. If we change back to 2 EM, it doesn't really change. If we change it to 1 EM, it will become the size of 16 pixel. And this is because that my browser uh, is default to 16 pixel. Um, usually people's browser will also default to 16 pixel, but um, this is just another way for you to uh, change the size of anything. There's also a uh, percentage. You can do, for instance, uh, 1%. And 1% is essentially relative um, to, the, um, to the whole page. And this might be like a little bit more uh, intuitive if, if we are using, uh, say, a height. So let's say height. Uh, 20%, and then I got color. Now let's actually make it a little bit larger. Uh, probably need to add this. Hmm, that's weird. Let's actually try it on card. Uh, pixel. Probably 30 pixels is like too small for the two. Oh, that's probably because we haven't, um, yeah. So using height is pretty tricky because you usually requires a parent, you usually requires a parent uh, element uh, which ha already has some height. And this way you can actually, and this way you can actually calculate uh, the height by using eighty percent. Otherwise, it's just like times the uh, eighty percent by zero. So let's make the body. Let's say a uh, thousand pixel. As you can see, now if we uh, if the car has a height of eighty percent, and and if the body, like the parent container outside the card has a height of a thousand pixel, then the car will have around 800 pixel. Let's actually make the body a little bit smaller. Let's try 800 pixel, maybe it's still too large, 500 pixel, 200. Okay, 200 seems fine. As you can see, if we change it to 50%, it becomes a small. If we change it to 60%, it becomes a little bit larger and 70% it becomes uh, a little bit larger as well. And so this is uh, height. So this is uh, percentage. And there's also view height and view width. So what separates view heights and view widths from percentage is that um, percentage, well, um, the percentage is calculated based on its parent container. However, view height and view width here, VH and VW is calculated based on the entire view width of the port of the window. So for instance, if we do 70 view widths or actually view heights, it becomes like 70% of this whole window. And the same can also apply to widths. So for instance, we want to do 50 view widths and it becomes the essentially half of the um, size of the window. So this is view width and view height. Any questions for all the uh, sizing properties?
Makes sense. Okay. Glad to hear that. Cool. Now we can go on to background. And we have already used background color quite a lot. As you can see, this is essentially the color of the background. There's also something called background image. Since I don't really have an image here, let's just search out for some example. As you can see here, um, so here the body has a background image of URL paper.gif. This is probably something that they host on their website. As you can see here, uh, if we like delete it, if we uh, delete this line and click wrong, the background image goes away. If we make it back, it adds the picture to the background of the body. And this is essentially background image. Instead of adding a color, it adds a background image. And we have already mentioned color. And there are essentially three ways of doing color. First of all, it's a predefined color. You can call it by name, like black, blue, red. You can also use RGB or RGBA. And what does RGBA stands for? A is essentially a uh, transparency uh, channel that you can add. For instance, if you want the color, uh, for instance, let's try it here. So, Let's say like 200, 20, 20. I don't know what the color is. Okay, so kind of like a, this reddish color. And if we have a A channel, let's make it RGB A. Uh, let's make it like 70. As you can see, it becomes a little bit more transparent. And if there like something down below, and if you change it to 0%, it becomes completely transparent. So this is a pretty like um, pretty neat tool that you can use to also change the transparency of a color. And now let's talk about the box model. And the box model is um, the most important thing I would say in CSS. And box model contains these three things. So it contains, first of all, padding, uh, padding, padding, border, and margin. And the box model is essentially saying that every element in HTML will be, is kind of like, it can be modeled by a box model. And it's first surrounded by a padding. And then outside of padding, it's surrounded by a border. And outside of border, it's surrounded by a margin. And we can uh, set these three properties separately. For instance, we want to change the uh, Alex Wu's uh, padding. So about car title. Uh, let's actually give it a background color to start, start with. It'll make our things easier. And let's change the display to block. And change the width probably. So let's give you a width of 200 pixel and a height of 300 pixel. 300 pixels, maybe too much. Let's do this. Cool. And let's just give you a color Y to make it look okay. Cool. And now, if we set the pattern to become, uh, let's say, 50 pixel. So you can see the content inside this big blue box has a 50 pixel padding between the content. So the content has a padding, 50 pixel padding between kind of like the outside of the box. And this is what it, a padding is. And a padding is essentially the distance between the content and the actual like container. And if we give it a border, uh, let's make the border um, 10 pixel, black, 10 pixel solid, um, black. 
And for Serbia, as you can see, the border will not influence padding in any way. However, if you add a, bo add a border to that element, you will add another 10 pixel around this element. And let's see what margin does. So let's see margin, 50 pixel. As you can see, after adding the margin 50 pixel, the tag here has a distance of 50 pixel with this tag. And so this is kind of like the box model. And if we actually style this introduction to a CSS as well, let's style it. So let's style it this way. Background color, let's give it red. Yes, yeah, so you can see here, you can see there's a margin of 50 here, margin of 50 here, and this is what margin is doing. And unlike padding, margin is something outside of the actual tag, outside of the actual element. And padding is something inside the element and outside the actual content. And border is something in between the padding and the margin. And you can also, so, when you're doing margin 50 pixel, you are actually like marking all the margin around the element. And you can also set like, for instance, only the top margin to become a 50 pixel. And if you, you can also update here, 50 pixel. Uh, this will update the right margin. And if you change it here, for example, make this 50 pixel, it will update the bottom margin. And finally, this will update the left margin. And this is a way that you can control like all four margin around the element. And similarly, you can do this for padding. So for instance, 10 pixel. Well, only one 10 pixel will say that it's like all the same around four side. If you do 10 pixel, 20 pixel, 30 pixel, 40 pixel. You can see 10 is here, the padding is here, 20 will be here, 30 will be here, and 40 will be here. So this is padding. And this is the box model. Are there any questions for box model? Cool. Okay, now let's talk about something that's super important uh, when you are trying to develop something, uh, develop some CSS, especially, which is called the dev tools. So first of all, how do you open the dev tool? So let's say you go onto a website, for instance, Google. And then you look at Google. You think Google is really pretty for some reason. And how do you open the dev tool? It's by doing, you right click on the web page and click inspect. And then a, a panel will like pops out here. And then you can inspect all the cool properties through this dev tool. If you use the select an element function, you can, for instance, select the Google logo. And if you click on it, as you can see here, it will show that it's an image. And it will show all the uh, CSS, uh, related CSS here on the CSS panel. And you can actually change it. So for instance, uh, you can change, for instance, the font size to 100 pixel. As you can see here, the font size suddenly becomes much larger. Make it 50 pixel, it becomes larger. You can also change the color. Let's make it blue. The color, the color doesn't change for some reason. Maybe uh, Google override it for somehow. And notice that if you change things in the dev tool, you, you, you are not actually, you are not hacking Google. You are just changing the local copy of the uh, Google website on your own computer. And no one else will see it. And however, this will be a very valuable tool when you're trying to develop your own 
uh, website. So for instance, when you're looking, for instance, when you have this uh, button here, if you want to like pinpoint the margin that this button has, you can click on it. As you can see here, Chrome has laid out a very nice box model for you. And as you can see, it has 11 margin on top and bottom, four, and mar four margin on left and right. It has 16 paddings around it. And you can actually change the padding as well by double click on it. If you change it to zero, as you can see, the Google search button now has like zero padding here. We can also change this one to like 200. As you can see here, it becomes suddenly much larger. So this is a pretty good tool to understand uh, more about box model as well. So this is a Chrome uh, Chrome dev, uh, dev tool. And many other browser has it. If you have, if you use Firefox, it also has it. If you use Edge, it also has it. And there's also a lot of other tools, for, for instance, console, where you can directly write uh, JavaScript into it. We'll be teaching JavaScript later. This, later. And there's also a network. So yeah, there are a lot of cool stuff that comes with this uh, inspect tool. So definitely feel free to check it out. And if you click refresh after you make all the crazy changes by using the dev tool, as you can see the Google went back to normal, which is a further proof that you are not hacking Google. So this is the dev tool. And in conclusion, CSS, if we use this um, house, house like uh, metaphor, CSS is the furniture, the wallpaper, uh, the vibes of the house. It makes the house pretty. And without CSS, I mean, we can probably visit the internet, but it will be like pretty different. And CSS can be pretty tricky to grasp at first, but with staff tools and some patience and practice, we're definitely able to handle any styling problem in instance. So before we end today's lecture, are there any questions? Let's actually stop the recording. Okay, cool. Uh, stop.